Hi, I'm Emma. Before we dive into my story, please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Now let's begin. As I opened the door to our new home, Lily's eyes sparkled with excitement. Mom, look, it's so big, she exclaimed, running through the empty rooms. I smiled, feeling a sense of hope. After years of struggle, this move represented a new chapter for us. Our first encounter with Mr. Jacobs, our next-door neighbor, was unexpected. He appeared at our doorstep with a welcoming smile, offering a homemade pie. Hello there, I'm George Jacobs. Welcome to the neighborhood, he said cheerfully. Thank you, Mr. Jacobs. I'm Emma, and this is my daughter, Lily, I replied, pleasantly surprised by his kindness. As days passed, Mr. Jacobs became a regular visitor. He often offered to babysit Lily when I had late shifts at the hospital. You work so hard, Emma. Let me help with Lily, he insisted one evening. Grateful for his support, I accepted his offer, unaware of the web of deceit slowly entangling us. One afternoon, I overheard a conversation between Lily and Mr. Jacobs in the garden. Mr. Jacobs, you're like the grandpa I never had, Lily said, giggling. Mr. Jacobs laughed, patting her head gently. You're a special little girl, Lily. Always remember that. I watched them, a warm feeling in my heart. Little did I know, this warmth would soon turn into a burning sense of betrayal. It started subtly, whispers behind closed doors, and side glances that I couldn't quite understand. The change in the neighborhood's attitude towards me was gradual, but noticeable. It was during a casual conversation with a fellow neighbor, Mrs. Thompson, that the truth came crashing down. Emma, I don't mean to pry, but is everything all right at home? We're just a bit concerned, Mrs. Thompson said hesitantly. Confused, I asked. Concerned about what? Well, George mentioned you've been quite... overwhelmed. That Lily might be feeling neglected, she replied, avoiding my gaze. My heart sank. That's not true. Lily is my world, I said, a mix of anger and disbelief turning inside me. Later that day, I confronted Mr. Jacobs. George, why are you spreading rumors about me? I asked, trying to keep my voice steady. Rumors? Emma, I'm just concerned about Lily. She seems happier with me. Maybe you're just too busy, he said, his voice dripping with fake concern. I was speechless. How could he twist kindness into betrayal? The impact of his words hit home hardest with Lily. Mom, why don't you spend more time with me like Mr. Jacobs does? She asked one evening, her words like daggers to my heart. Sweetie, I'm doing all this for us. You know I love you, I replied, my voice breaking. But Mr. Jacobs said you're always too busy for me, Lily said, her eyes welling up with tears. I hugged her tightly, fighting back tears of my own. That's not true, honey. I love you more than anything. As Lily drifted apart, spending more time with Mr. Jacobs, I felt a profound sense of betrayal. He had ingratiated himself into our lives, only to stab me in the back. I knew I had to act, to expose his deceit, but the evidence was elusive. The turning point came unexpectedly. I bumped into an old neighbor of Mr. Jacobs, who casually mentioned his past. Oh, George. He had to move out from his last neighborhood. Caused quite a stir with his stories. That was all I needed to hear. A plan began to form in my mind. A plan to reveal Mr. Jacobs's true nature and win back my daughter's trust. Armed with the knowledge of Mr. Jacobs's past, I knew it was time to act. I needed to gather more evidence to expose him for who he truly was. It was a challenge, as Mr. Jacobs was cunning, always covering his tracks but I was determined, for Lily's sake. I started by casually talking to other neighbors, trying to piece together a pattern of Mr. Jacobs's behavior. Yes, he's always been a bit too interested in other people's business, Mrs. Lee, another neighbor, told me, always offering to help, but it felt... off. Then one day, I had a breakthrough. I found an old newspaper article about Mr. Jacobs's previous neighborhood. It detailed similar incidents of manipulation and deceit. My hands trembled as I read it, the pieces of the puzzle finally fitting together. With the evidence in hand, I planned a neighborhood meeting under the guise of discussing a new community project. The day of the meeting, I felt a mix of nervousness and determination. As the neighbors gathered, Mr. Jacobs walked in, his usual charming self. What's this all about, Emma? He asked with a smile. Just a little community project I thought we could discuss, I replied, my voice steady. I started the meeting, talking about community values and trust. Then, 
I shifted the conversation. It's important to know who we're trusting. Sometimes people aren't who they seem to be. I could see Mr. Jacobs' smile falter, a hint of nervousness in his eyes. Like Mr. Jacobs here, who has a history of manipulating his neighbors, I continued, my voice growing stronger, just like he did in his last neighborhood. Murmurs rippled through the crowd. Mr. Jacobs's face turned pale. I revealed the newspaper article explaining everything. The room was filled with gasps and whispers. Mr. Jacobs tried to defend himself, but his words fell on deaf ears. The truth was out. Lily, who had been standing at the back, came forward. Her eyes were wide with realization. Mom, is this true? Did Mr. Jacobs lie to us? I nodded, tears brimming in my eyes. Yes, honey, but it's going to be okay now. The meeting ended with Mr. Jacobs leaving in a hurry, his reputation in tatters. The neighbors apologized to me, ashamed of their quick judgment. That night, as I tucked Lily into bed, I'm sorry, Mom. I should have believed you. I kissed her forehead. It's okay, Lily. We're together now, and that's what matters. The aftermath of the meeting was like a storm passing through our neighborhood. The once friendly smiles and waves Mr. Jacobs received turned into cold shoulders and turned backs. His influence had evaporated overnight. A few days later, I saw Mr. Jacobs sitting alone on his porch, a forlorn figure. Lily, who was with me, hesitated before approaching him. Mr. Jacobs, why did you lie to us? She asked, her voice quivering. He looked up, his eyes tired and empty. I thought I could make things better for myself. I didn't mean to hurt anyone, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. Lily shook her head. You hurt my mom, and you hurt me. I trusted you. As we walked away, Lily took my hand. Mom, I'm sorry for not believing you. I know now you always have my best interest at heart. I squeezed her hand, feeling our bond stronger than ever. It's okay, Lily. We all make mistakes. What matters is that we learn from them. The final blow to Mr. Jacobs came when his partner, Vanessa, left him. I heard from Mrs. Thompson that Vanessa had discovered his manipulative ways. She took what she could and left him, leaving Mr. Jacobs in financial ruin. He's selling his house, Mrs. Lee told me one afternoon. Can't afford to keep it anymore. As Mr. Jacobs' moving truck pulled away, I felt a sense of closure. He had wronged us, and now he was facing the consequences of his actions. Lily and I moved on with our lives. We became more involved in the community, and our home was once again filled with laughter and love. The dark cloud that was Mr. Jacobs had lifted, and in its place was a bright future for both of us. As I tucked Lily into bed that night, she whispered, Mom, I'm glad we have each other. I kissed her forehead, whispering back, Me too, sweetheart. Me too. Now that our story has reached its conclusion, here's a thought-provoking question for you all. Do you believe Mr. Jacobs deserved the fate he received? Or do you think there was a better way to handle his deceit? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this story and want to see more, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for notifications. Your support means a lot.